Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this brand new day. Yay, a good day to be metabolizing, because any day you are metabolizing is a good one. Thumbs up for that. I came to a half revelation yesterday, and I'm going to try and remember the full thing, because <laughs> I have been slowly sliding into depression for a while. Slow ride, I have biochemical stuff, so, you know, I have to strap in for the ride on that, but I'm also, you know, volatile. Uh, everybody is, but my natural status, natural is in that's what I've done my whole life, and so that's what I fall back on consciously, subconsciously, unconsciously, it has just been the depressed state. I've been slowly sliding back down and not understanding why, and of course not liking it. I don't like being really horrifically depressed. You know, I've been moderately good for a, a long time and now sliding down and not really understanding why. One of the things though that my therapist really likes about what I do is I like to set my teeth into things and then just chew on it until I figure it out. That's why even after all these years, I'm still working on it, figuring out things for my cosmic horror framework. I just like to set my teeth in there and chew on it until I get all the details. Frequently through my therapy, he has said, I would like you to try this. And then I say, I've been thinking on that. Here's what I've thought. And he likes that. That's I am very proactive in things. I set my teeth into them and then try to figure out what's going on. I've been doing that about trying to figure out why I'm slowly sliding into depression. Partly, I figured it out when I watched that. I probably talked about it because I still have memory issues, but I had seen a little meme thing that was about, you know, we have issues today because of just all the stuff that happens. By that, I mean, used to be before the internet, before mass media, before all of that, you got maybe one or two bad pieces of news, <clears throat> mega bad news in a day. And then of course, mass media and the news cycle. And suddenly you got a lot of bad news every day and stuff that you can't do anything about but you're still getting that information and then the internet and especially if you go on to any of the social media stuff twitter facebook but i don't have instagram or any of those things so i don't know if they do those there but outrage and anger are kings and queens and all everybody trying to be you know all nobility class there and it's just bad news, a constant flood of bad news that you can't do anything about. So what are you supposed to do with all of this bad news? You internalize it, unfortunately. Before I started taking ADHD meds, I had reached a, a kind of a homeostasis where with my relative numbness and my waking up mentally and being able to process things, I was able to understand and let go of a lot of things. I am powerless. We all basically are. You know, what can I do about what's happened in Texas with all these anti-abortion stuff and the rolling back of Roe v. Wade in the United States and all the bad stuff that's likely going to happen? Nothing. I'm powerless. I had understood that much better and had come to terms with being powerless when I was more numb. I was in a homeostasis position of numb enough and letting go so that I was able to just understand, let go, not be depressed about this stuff and slowly work on recovery. I have been trying to continue that in my head, but I'm not in the physical state that I was back then. With the ADHD meds, I'm able to focus and concentrate and think and remember. I'm able to deal with my depression better. My homeostasis has been shattered and I've still been dealing with the situation like it's been the same. 
I am in a new state. I need to reach a new point of homeostasis to not go too wild in this direction or too wild in this direction to be right here. I need to remember how to let go. I am powerless. There is nothing I can do in the world. As they point out, you can do everything correct. You can recycle, even though recycling is a joke in the world. You can do all these things properly, and then your entire life's work of hard work is just uh, done in an hour's accident by a company that accidentally releases several hundred million tons of carbon into the atmosphere. We are powerless. It's tough to remember that, especially stated again with social media being an outrage fueling machine. The world really likes to shove in your face that you are powerless. You are power. You have no power. You don't like what's happening? Guess what? It's happening. You have no power. You don't like that? Slap. What are you going to do about it? Fuck you. And that's hard to take. But understanding that, I already feel better now. Because it was last night when I was out walkies that I fully understood the full implications of I am in a new state, I need to reach that homeostatic, homeostatic state, I need to remember how to let go. And I have been letting go since last night. Uh, understanding and accepting once again my powerlessness not internalizing <clears throat> the bad things that I cannot change. So that's good. It's a process. A process for everybody. One of the things that even my therapist had noticed, because I've mentioned to him, not noticed, but I said this and so he understood that I understood this, is Life is not a series of checkboxes, and I've mentioned how it's like a series of dials that you have to keep coming back to to get everything back into the green instead of the yellow or the red where things are crashing. You don't just do it once, forget, and then walk on. They all take work. The problem is, of course, you can only work on like 40 dials at a time, and there are about 80 of them. So if you spend too much time on one set of dials, everything else falls apart. You have to spread your attention to get all those dials and you work on some of these until they're up into the green, then you go back over to these ones over here and you get those up to the green and then you go over here and you work on these ones and you have to come over here. It's not a check box once and done because when you once and done it or you rush stuff and then you figure it's finished and you don't have to work on it anymore it's gonna come up from behind you and oh boy is it gonna hurt when it slams into you so remembering that is going to help me and hopefully it will help everyone out there just do what you can but accept your powerlessness and and that helps one thing though, also, I almost started to cry in Safeway last night because I came to once again another revelation. I have talked before about how trying to wrap your head around different things is a very, very good thing. And if you ever think about the Addams Family, the original Addams Family cartoons that they made the TV series out of, then all the various cartoons past that and then the various movies is, while they have altered some of the stuff and in some ways I don't like because in my head canon and in the movies I don't like this where they don't kill. They're dangerous but as long as you follow the rules, you won't die. And in the movies, there's punching down, and I don't like that. So, but wrapping your head around other ideas where Morticia sees the beauty in death. And that's hard to wrap your mind around, just the beauty in death, because dying is unpleasant. And if you ever watch videos, if you look at it as in, oh, what happens to my mortal flesh? It's awful. It's terrible, and we don't like thinking of the end. But, in trying to wrap my head around what that would be like, 
One thing I had thought of was to take a look and imagine that at the moment of your conception that there is a seed that is planted in a fertile field. And when you were born, that seed sprouts as well. And as you grow, that plant grows too. But as you get older and you start to mature and then wither from old age, that's when the plant becomes really robust. And there's a great big old bud that's going to burst into flower. But it never does. And you get older and the plant gets more and more ready. And on the day that your body stops, <laughs> I'm doing it now. Emotion has got me. I, there's another time I want to talk about why I have tears for everything. But for right now, it's this. Where on the moment that you die, like a you know, a light bulb being turned off, that's when your corpse flower blooms. And that's a nice way to look at death. You know, you leave a nice blossom behind that corpse flower. I have said that it's rough thinking about most of humanity and how we don't remember anyone at all. And I was saying, gosh, you know, I don't really want to head off. And you know, at the end, you just become another one of the faceless gray mass of the dead. That's one way to look at it. But the other way to look at it is looking back on, on human history. There's not a great mass of faceless dead. It is a beautiful field of color here I go, of color and beauty and all of those beautiful blooming corpse flowers in human history. Then as you can tell, I, well in fact I still got time. One of the reasons that I do have so a uh, tear response so often, so hard for anything. During my life, I spent most of it in not in good shape. You know, I suffered various types of abuse when I was younger, and that didn't help. It led into drinking and becoming a functional alcoholic before I was 12, and then leading into my full alcoholism as I got older, and then my crash and burn on that and my depression and trying to wake up but watching my wife die in front of me and then dealing with her death afterward. I've never had a chance to really mature emotionally. I don't know how to process happiness. I don't know how to process anything but just sadness. So when I have emotions, any kind of emotion. My body's first response to go to straight to because it knows how to process that is tears. So when I feel any sort of happiness, I start to cry. When I feel any sort of like, oh gosh, look at the cute puppies in, in pictures, I get tears. Every response because I've never known how to process anything but just crying. And I learned that as a child, and I never had a chance to emotionally and such move past it. I'm trying to learn, but just any sort of honest feeling or emotion, I it expresses with tears, with catching in my throat from, you know, when you get tears. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh. <coughs> Past that, let me check my topics list here because there was a few things I wanted to talk about. Oh, this one's fun. It's really quick, it's fast, but last night, through a combination, I think, of just the factors, I ate bad food and then I actually had some peppermint candies on top of that. And then to get ready for sleep, I had some THC product and that was a sativa, which can really get your body ramped up and my, my pulse went up. My heartbeat almost doubled. And that was a bad feeling. I did not like having my pulse so quick. Even lying in bed, I checked my pulse and it was, again, almost twice as fast. In fact, right now, it's pretty quick and I, I understand why. Bad food and such. But the thing is, 
my pulse has fallen down so low. Not terribly, it's not bad low, but the average heartbeat range of healthy people is like 70 to 100. If you're in that range, you're fine. You know, a little high, you might want to bring it lower, but you're still in the normal range. My pulse had gone up to uh, into the higher end of the normal range, and I felt bad. My pulse going from 55 to 90 made me feel terrible. My pulse coming up into the normal range made me feel bad. <laughs> Thumbs up for that. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people, or however many people left comments. There aren't many anymore, but, you know, thank you, each and every one of you that do. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker, and even though I count an American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand, uh, with all sorts of issues, I've got all sorts of issues, I do my best, but... We have Dela Deers, thumbs up and thank you. Ice Damon, it certainly is. It certainly is. Thank you very much and good to see you in the comments. We have Shinji, greatly appreciated. A Bizarre YouTuber, uh, thank you and will do my best. Sean Kelly, greatly appreciated. We have uh, Ichi Matsuko, and I'm nowhere close, but thank you very much. And oh, oh my god, Vegemite Sushi, <laughs> just that name. Oh boy, thumbs up and thank you very much. We have Beanbag88, thumbs up. There's Johnny K, uh, with a good idea. I'm gonna have to talk about that. Monster Truck Madness, thumbs up and greatly appreciated. Bah, thumbs up. And Demon, greatly appreciated. We have Favel, thumbs up and thank you. Then Young Son the God, I, Young Son the God. Okay, there we go. That wasn't a weird name. That was a sentence. Greatly appreciate. We have 100%. Elon Musk left a lot of comments and thank you very much. It is appreciated. Seamus Williams or Seamus. It all depends. I don't know, but thank you. We have Robert. Greatly appreciated. And then there is a call sign Tallowwood with a good idea. And I'm going to have to check on that. And then there's Justin Urban. Thumbs up. Bird Bird Lisa, 58, thumbs up and thank you. There is James Lagoski, thumbs up, and that is it. Thank you, each and every one of you. You get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people, and it is appreciated to no end. Definitely a thumbs up. I have no idea where the text box is uh, for the video description because I don't know what device you're watching this on, but if you can locate the text box, inside are all sorts of links like to my various channels and to my Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com, and if you could become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be truly beautiful and awesome. Each of these people helps keep me fed, a roof over my head, and of course, the people that send me things off my Amazon wish list, my cat and my hamster, appreciate that to no end. Definitely a thumbs up. Now, if you cannot donate, or you simply do not donate, I got it all backwards, or you do not feel obligated, I do not feel entitled. There we go. And if you cannot donate, or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. Thank you very much. And of course, if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be cool. Well, thumbs up for that. Here we are on, uh, it's Saturday when I'm recording this. I uh, don't have to worry about doing anything at all except whatever I want to do for the next two days. No great obligations, so definitely a thumbs up on that. Hopefully, if you're watching it on a weekend, you are going to have the same. Now, of course, I'm going to end with this because it's extremely important. But the Kofefe bug is dangerous extremely so ex exceptionally except I'm gonna try that in English now it is exceptionally dangerous especially for the unvaxxed if you cannot get vaxxed please maintain your social distancing and wear a mask do all these things and for everybody else for safety's sake, wear a mask, wash your hands, try not to touch your face, maintain your social distancing. Everybody just get vaxxed. I'm going to get boosters when they're available. 
thumbs up on that. Let's try not to keep adding to the pile of corpses, all right? So, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is, well, in my book, that's a definite thumbs up right there.